when I first saw the land notes come, you know, someone put it on there and someone said, do you think this is going to sell? And I was like, go ahead, try it. It's free to list. And so they put it on there. It was just a bunch of, does it look good? I was like, it looks like a bunch of rocks to me, but it was out in the middle of Colorado. And, and, they, and then, uh, it looks like dirt. <laughs> it looks like dirt. And he, he, uh, he called me back later that day and he's like, I'm already in a closing. I'm like, you sold one of those? He said, I sold all of them. I was like, you did. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Jack Boss Show, where we talk all about all things real estate, finance, and also entrepreneurship. And today, we're going to take the combination of finance and real estate and talk about buying and selling notes with our two guests, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen from Paperstack. And Paperstack is, well, that's actually let's you guys explain what Paperstack is. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. for having us. Thanks, Jack. Really appreciate it. Um, big fan of yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Paperstack. It's a uh, it's an online trading platform for mortgage debt, um, it, or you know, land notes stuff along those lines. People are coming onto the platform and listing notes for sale, and then we've got um, I think about fourteen thousand users right now that are buying and selling debt. So it's really a marketplace for people to meet up sell the debt or um, market it. And then Paperstack is actually a closing process as well, which is really the secret sauce. You can go onto the platform. Um, not only can you find the buyer, but then we'll walk you through the transaction of selling it from front to back. So from the time you submit an offer till we generate the, um, the purchase sale agreement for you, all the transfer documents, the assignments, allonges, um, provide you with quick claim deed templates if you're doing a land note that you need to transfer. And uh, then we'll handle the, the servicing transfer. So it's a, it's really a front to back solution for people who are buying and selling notes. Okay, very cool. So well, let's let's jump into that. So uh, let, how did you come up with the idea that the world needs an online trading platform for notes, which obviously it needed because you guys yeah. are very successful and uh, which is really, really cool. A lot of our students, as, as you guys know, we're, we're teaching and uh, land flipping and and one of mm -hmm. our, our most popular exit strategies is sell land with seller financing and make land cash flow. So when uh, so you're creating a note, and and in many cases the students, the reason why they sold it with seller financing is because they get a higher price and they uh, and and it's a faster sale, but they don't necessarily always want to keep the note. So they're going out on uh, and looking for a note buyer. And you guys has really created a cool platform with Paperstack for that. So how did you come up with the idea for that? Um, well, I mean, you, hit, you kind of hit on it. It's recapitalization is one of the things you always want to recapitalize as quickly as possible. Um, but another thing was security. Um, I came from the real estate side and I, you know, from 2005 to the end of 2011, I was buying and selling real estate and I sold my company and was going to have a bit of a, you know, a lifestyle business, do some fix and flips and just enjoy my kids, play some golf. And I actually ended up um, buying a mortgage note kind of by accident, um, bought the note and realized that it was the Wild West. There was no set process for, for closing a deal. Um, you know, I was sending money to sellers I'd never met before. And then they were sending me the actual hard collateral file of the mortgage and the note. And I guess the kind of the the straw that broke the camel's back was I, I got a, a collateral file in and the only thing original was a lost note affidavit. And so I said, you know what, we need to, we need to make something that's secure. Um, it's systematized. So people know what they're going to get every single time. If you know what you're going to get and it's, you know, you go to, if you go to McDonald's, they do the same thing over and over and over, you know what you're getting. And we wanted to create something that people um, could use to buy and sell debt and something that would make their lives easy. And so that's what we did. We made paper stacked. Um, we launched it, I guess, at the end of 2017 and immediately started enhancing, rewriting, making it better, um, listening to what our users said on, on things that they would want in there with the sole goal of it, it makes it easier to, to sell your product once you have it. So if you're originating owner financing, it's so much easier to put it on an MLS or something like they have in real estate there was nothing like that. And so we're like, you know, we, we sort of made it as a way to scratch our own itch, which is how most great things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you think about it, like if you listen, to, if you listen to this and you're just like, well, why don't I just work with a bank? Now, what we're talking about is seller finance notes. Basically, mm -hmm. if you go buy a house and you go have uh, get a loan from Wells Fargo, what Wells Fargo does in their whatever department, they're going to go and they sell that note like the next day or the next week. 
to some to 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 a, to another company, and that's a well organized commercial institutional process where there are certain rules, there are certain sets of documents, and there are certain things. In the private world, that does not exist, or it did not exist before. Like uh, very few companies like your guys has exist in the private world. Like when we we've done land deals for twenty three years, uh, we've never sold a note because we like holding our we like the cash flow, but uh, that might change. But one of the reasons we never sold a note is that actually the process wasn't clear. It's like you want to buy my notes, okay? So what 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 do we do? We go to a title company. A title company is expensive. A title company charges a lot of money for it. They give you a bunch of paperwork. So on most notes, it's not actually even feasible unless they are for a certain dollar amount. So how did you guys, so with you guys, let's, you guys have basically created a standard process for that that now can be used. But uh, what what kind of is the fee structure for you guys? I mean, if somebody, uh, or what's the process? Let's talk about the process. And then uh, what I'm really wanting to get to is like, what kind of notes is your service best suited for? Sure. So, I mean, those are all, all great questions. One of, one of the things that's really important to consider is the value of having an actual marketplace. Because right. if I have a note that I would like to sell it to, and maybe I, there's one or two people that I'm able to talk to that will give me an offer. Well, I don't really have anything else to compare it to. I don't know. Is this a competitive offer? Uh, should I be selling it for 50 or 60 cents on the dollar? Or is there is it worth more money? And that's one of the things about having a marketplace and having 14,000 people registered who are actually actively buying debt is the market will dictate what your price is. And I've heard it so many times where people come in and they say, I just want to know, am I getting a fair value for this? They list it on our platform. And instead of selling it for 50 or 60 cents on the dollar, they're selling it for 80, 85 cents on the dollar. <laughs> um, so that's one of the huge benefits of the, the actual marketplace. So it all really starts with the marketplace, right? As a seller, I'm going to go ahead and create a listing just like I would do on maybe Craigslist or Facebook marketplace or the MLS. We walk you through the process. You create a listing with the details of the loan, and then you put it active and you can set your price based on, I want it firm. You know, this is my price. This is what I want. Make an offer, or you can do a blind listing where you don't put a price and you say, here, just give me your best offer. Um, Don't do the the yield. Yeah. You can can set it by yield, which is great. Set it by yield. So if you have, you know, if you're listing uh, or if you're writing loans at 12.9%, that's a that's a pretty great yield just at selling it at par. But if you really want to juice the pot, you can say, okay, well, if I want to sell this at a 14% yield and really bring some buyers in, what's the sales price look like? Mm-hmm. Um, then on the other side of that, go ahead. No, so you guys have, when somebody comes in and, and starts the process, uh, you guys have basically a calculator that allows them to figure out uh, if I want to, sell it at a 14, 15% yield to the buyer, which means that the buyer is effectively making 14, 15%, then what discount you have to sell it at in order to accomplish that. Exactly. And you can, in the calculator is dynamic. So you can do it based on yield. You can do it based on discount to the actual um, balance of the loan or to the actual value of the land. So right. if you adjust one of those, the other two will adjust, right? So you can you can kind of pick and choose sure. your um, your marketing strategy. On the other side of the equation, you've got the buyers. Um, buyers seem to love it because there is an open marketplace. There's a rotating um, amount of inventory. We usually have somewhere between 250 to 300 or 400 assets that are actually for sale. And they range from institutional loans that are, you know, Bank of America originated, maybe they sold off, went non-performing, um, were sold to a hedge fund, and now they're performing again, listing on there to owner finance notes, to land notes, mm-hmm. contracts for deeds. Some There's been some commercial debt. So really it's a, just kind of a the secondary, the small secondary space um, that we're all playing in. There's a bunch of different varieties of, of debt that's available on there. Um, and people, buyers are on there seeking yield. They do love it because we have saved searches. 
Yeah, it does. So a buyer can go on there, set up their buying criteria, whether it's a state uh, or geographical specific um, location. Maybe they're looking for a target yield. Maybe they have a target purchase price. You can save all these different um, configurations and then the platform will email you when something comes available that matches your criteria. So if, cool. if I'm a buyer and I find something I like, I can just message a seller right there on the platform and it moves us into our own siloed transaction. It kind of gets you out of doing business in your inbox. That is very, so, very cool. I really love that. Uh, now let's, let's walk to the process. So somebody says, somebody just, let's say this, this real estate for a living. And, and again, in the, in the house flipping world, the margins are a little bit smaller because if you do seller financing, I mean, it, it happens that let's say you, you own a house for in clear and you sell it for self-financing, but you really want to be cashed out. You could take as the as the person who just did that, you could go on your platform and sell that note and get more or less cashed out, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what's going on. And you can oftentimes sell it for sell it for more. Um if, you, if you're offering owner financing to somebody and the house is worth 220, you can sometimes sell that for 240 with, you know, a $30,000 down payment and you can make a little extra juice in there to compensate for any discounts that you're going to have to take. So it's, so you're, you're selling with, if you offer seller financing as a house seller, which is very relevant right now, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you're saying like you could actually get more for the house because of that. Yep. Absolutely. So how's, the, how's the current interest rate? Let's talk houses and let's talk land a little bit later, because obviously a lot of my audience is land, but also people that find my channel, they're just like, uh, they might be in the housing area. So let's talk houses first and then land. In the, in the housing side with interest rates at uh, wherever they are right now, uh, how do you find that has affected ye, the, the seller financing or the note selling kind of uh, part on your, of your business? It, it seems like it, you can definitely charge a higher interest rate um, and it not be really frowned upon. You know, if it, when rates were three and a half percent and you want to charge nine percent, people are like, well, why am I going to pay that? But right now it's not uncommon to see a six and a half to seven percent retail loan and interest rates. Um, I'm seeing stuff at like nine to nine and a half percent all day long on the real on the real estate side. And One then of the on that I think is important is tying what's rent in the area. Like, so if, if houses are renting for 1900 bucks, if you can make your mortgage payment that they're going to have around that $1,900 mark, you really got a recipe that makes it really easy to sell the loan to, um, or to sell that house with owner financing to the buyer, but also then to turn around and sell the loan. Cause you know, the borrowers are not going to be overstretched. They're already renting in that area for that price. So if you can keep those two aligned that kind of dictates where you're going to sell something for okay so let's 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 unfold that a little bit more so what you're saying is uh say, say that one more time so if the rents are like 1900 dollars in the area and your self-financing payment is also 1900 dollars in the area then that makes you feel good but what does that have to do with a, that only applies if that person already in the past rented in that area Right? Mm. It still needs to be based on the a financial ability of the of the buyer, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. You never want to put a borrower into something that they can't afford because it's just going to come back on you. Every time that we do an owner finance loan, they're going through. It would. It, it looks, smells, tastes, feels just like an institutional loan. Right, they're getting all the Dodd Frank compliance stuff. They're getting a 1003 loan app that they need to fill out. Um, just, and we have somebody underwrite it to look, make sure that they can afford to make the payment. Dings on credit are less important to us, um, but big down payments are. So I think the last one we did was um, we took a $30,000 down payment, 9.4% uh, interest rate, and the lady had a 744 credit score. So, so there's so people this is out when you guys do deals. This is not when it goes to paper stack, right? No, I actually sold that deal on paper stack, but also we'll, you know, we'll buy real estate owner finance it uh, just for personal stuff. Just like you, you're, you know, you know, we still invest our dollars in the real estate sure. space. Um, so yeah. we'll, we'll do it. You know, I'm just quoting one of the investments we did personally, and it was 9.4% interest. And we just went ahead and listed the loan right on paper stack to cash us out and ended up making probably an extra 20 grand on the deal because we used the owner financing play. 
So when you when somebody posted on on sell of, uh, on on paper stack, does the potential buyer of that note get to see the qualifications of the borrower? Do they get some insight of what underwriting has happened and things like that, so that they can kind of gauge? Because the numbers might look good, but if that if if that person if 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 the person who generated the note violated all the Dodd Frank rules and mm -hmm. put together a note that has no chance of actually being paid down. Uh, does does the buyer have the ability to see that? Absolutely. Buyer... As a buyer, you're going to want to ask on the platform for the due diligence documents, mm -hmm. right? Always the collateral, file. the collateral file, the origination package. Look, I'd like to see the origination package, credit score, stuff along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we have baked into the platform is we have escrow and collateral verification baked into part of our process. So okay. you can check out and have your funds sent to escrow as a buyer. So third-party escrow, which we, we own the escrow company, is, is holding the funds. And then the collateral file gets shipped to a third-party auditor out of um, California called Casey Wilson and Associates. At least that's who we're using right now. And they go through and look at the collateral file to verify the documents are actually originals and not just photocopies of stuff. Then they provide the buyer with color scan copies and a report attesting to, look, this is what we saw in the collateral file. So as a buyer, you can then look at the digital files first, trust that they're good, and then have them verified by a neutral third party. Okay, that's cool. That's that's where I'm going with that. So uh, from a buyer protection kind of point of view, because somebody could put could, could create the wildest loans out there and then sell them. And, and then obviously the buyer would be left stuck holding the bag. And, and in this particular case, but you guys have put some beautiful protection mechanism against that into that. So kudos. Now that's where it really well thought out. Um, I, I like that. So uh, on the housing side, let's continue out there for a moment. What do you see in the current market right now? And it's about the middle of the year right now, middle of 2023. Uh, what do you currently see is a yield that, uh, that a note buyer is uh, looking for to take over to buy a a note on a house? I guess it's kind of all tied to risk. Um, you know, the higher price band assets that have, um, are holding a little stronger stuff that's a little, a little less volatile. Um, you know, people will take the, the high single digits, you know, nine, 10%. If it's a little bit riskier of an investment, maybe, um, you know, lower income areas, more working class areas, maybe the, the assets are worth less. Um, you're seeing, in low teens to mid teens, uh, you know, 13%, 14%. Um, it all really comes down to how the, the loan was structured. Uh, and then definitely what's the payment history. If you've got no payment history so far, it's a, a newly originated loan with, you know, a $500 down payment, you can expect a pretty healthy discount. Um, if, yeah, but if you've got somebody who's, you know, they've got a, a 650, 700 credit score. Uh, they, they brought 40 or $50,000 down on an on a owner finance loan. People get pretty comfortable with those and they're willing to go in that 9%, 8% would be kind of really low, but eight or 9%, 10% loans. If there's a, an equity spread in there that's really protecting the lender, yeah. I mean, it, it's all tied to risk. It, pretty much it's always no, tied of course. to risk. No. Thank you, that makes sense. Uh, by the way, well, let's, let's talk about the world yield. Um, in the world of Google, everyone can look it up, but uh, how do you define the world yield? How do I define the word yield? It's basically, it's, it's, the, it's the return you're getting from your investment when you get back principal and interest. You know, it's a, you know, once you have your principal back in, how much money do we make on, the, on our investment? And it's, it's spread out over the life of your, your investment. So, yeah, because I, mean, I, I think a lot, I just want, what I want to clarify that uh, one of my skills is to simplify stuff. And, and, the, and when people hear interest rate, they hear interest rate and they're like, well, isn't the bank, isn't the interest rate the, the yield that they're making? Like, no, there's mm -hmm. a difference between yield and interest rate. If you have a hundred thousand dollar loan, if you buy a note for a hundred thousand dollars and it has a ten percent interest rate, then you're receiving a ten percent interest rate. But if you're buying this note for fifty thousand dollars, then you're receiving not a ten percent return on it because that loan is being paid off. The loan is a hundred thousand dollar loan and is receiving ten percent, but you only paid fifty thousand dollars, so you're getting 
the payment for $100,000, but you paid half of it. So your yield is much, much higher. Your real yes. return because you paid less for a higher amount of cash flow coming through. So if it's just interest only, let's say, you're getting $10,000 a year on a $50,000 investment. Well, that's a 20% yield in this simplified scenario. And it doesn't take into consideration payment of, 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 of equity in this case. So your yield is probably even higher on that end. But, uh, but, but just to, for, for people to understand listening to this, there's a difference between interest rate and yield. So what it really means is that the, the more, the steeper discount that you buy a note. So if you buy that $100,000 note for $90,000, well, then you're mm -hmm. receiving $10,000 on a $90,000 investment. That's like an 11% yield. If you're buying it for $75,000, well, or then you're getting, well, at this point, it's like a 14, 15% yield. And if you buy it for $50,000, it's a 20, 20% 20, 20 yeah. plus percent yield. So it, it, there's two factors. One is the interest rate. So, and therefore, obviously, the higher the interest rate, the more people are going to be willing to buy that note at what's called face value. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you if right. if you have a prop, if you have a, a a land note that you issued at fifteen percent, and somebody's looking to make a fifteen percent yield, and everything else looks good, credit and payment history and everything, they're probably going to pay you the full amount for that note because if they pay the full amount, how much are they making? Fifteen percent. Right? right. That's the mm -hmm. amount. That's the exact amount that they're making. So so they're happy with that. So the lower your interest rate is, the more discount you got to take. And obviously, the more the other factors that make that note more risky, the more discount you got to take. Because people are going to demand a higher risk the lower, the, the weaker the, the note is. Is that a good summary? That's a great summary. There's uh, one thing to note is if, if you end up, and I don't know if, if you're familiar with it, but selling a partial. Uh, on, on a loan. So if you originate a loan that's over 120 months, you can sell the first 60 months of that loan. And then after those 60 months, you get that loan back. Oftentimes what I've seen, especially in the land space where somebody is buying, you know, they may get a piece of land for 15,000 that's worth 75,000. Um, actually, we just saw something happen similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, 8,000. Yeah, they, they bought it for 8,000. The, the dirt was really worth about 75,000. And you can turn around and originate that owner finance loan, sell it to somebody, and then you can sell 30 months or 36 months of payments, which will recover your initial outlay. That actually it breaks the calculator when you start trying to figure in yield because you can have nothing into a deal. And in collect the last 90 months of payments and it's all it's just it, that really is is a nice way to do it and now why um, would somebody do that why would somebody buy only the first 60 months off the note uh, a lot of people love to get involved in real estate investing but they don't want to focus on long-term investments right so if i can buy 60 months it's a short-term investment and if i'm still hitting my 15 percent yield and I'm not doing it over 10, 10 years, but I can do it over five years or three years or two years, then it's a very attractive investment. Another reason why they would do that is because there's another interested party who is there in the event that the borrower stops paying, right? So the person who sold the partial is like, look, I want to make sure that this, this deal continues through. So I get that loan back. So they're going to work with the borrower to get them paying or to um, help whoever bought the partial into, you know, let's work out a solution to get, get your money back out of it because there's, there's financial motivation for them. So it's really, a, it's a really attractive investment if you're looking for somebody to kind of hold your hand through the process and you don't want your money tied up in, in very long term. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit more. What happens in such a partial situation? What happens if like, Halfway through, the seller, uh, the uh, sorry, the buyer, uh, the, the the owner of the property, the the person, the borrower, the person making the monthly payments, if they stop paying and disappear from the face of the earth and cannot be found anymore. Usually, what happens is there is a um, if the, if they sold a partial, the person that actually sold the partial, they're going to step in and continue to make those payments to get to either get them back on board paying again or till they can go ahead and get the property back, resell it and continue the payments for that person. Um, if the borrower is a great borrower and they cash out, 
right? That's another, another good problem to have because if I'm buying a partial, I'm buying, say I'm buying $60,000 worth of payments, but I'm paying you $40,000 for it. If right. it cashes out at any point, I'm still entitled to the 60,000. So that, that investor is going to, and it's happened. It, that happens quite often. Three or four months into buying a partial, they cash out. So you get your full money back plus what you were entitled. And it only took three months. Um, but everybody kind of works out the situation. Yeah, makes sense. Very cool. Now, I'm glad. And, and your platform basically can, can, can help with all these kind of scenarios. Or you yep. basically, the moment it's done, the, the moment the transaction is done, are you like done? Is that it? Or can they track the note afterwards uh, or how does that how does how does that work now obviously anyone can take the note out of your system and then once they bought it and bring it to his local title company and have them service it but do you offer also any kind of loan servicing and other kind of accelerate services or are you tied into some providers there we definitely have people we can refer to but we're we're, we're just focused on the transaction we don't handle the actual loan servicing the extent that we get involved is when a deal is closed, we notify the outgoing servicer and the incoming servicer of the transfer and let them know, hey, this loan has been sold. You're transferring it over to this company. Um, and we copy the buyer and the seller on it. So everybody's in, a, in, in the same loop. Obviously, anybody can always come back, review a transaction. All communication happens right on the platform. So whether you send an email, the email is going to wind up inside your timeline, um, whether you're chatting inside the, the platform, or you can even make a, a phone call inside the platform. It'll record it, transcribe it, and put it on your timeline. So the communication lines are always open, um, but the extent of post-closing, right now, we don't handle anything post-closing. Um, we can do recordings for you. So we can get assignments recorded, quick claim deeds recorded. That's definitely something we do offer. We are working on some additional post-closing um, tracking systems, but that's going to be a little bit in the future when we roll out our enterprise version of the product. Okay, very cool. Uh, now, going a little bit more into the creative finance, do you, do, do you deal with wraps? If somebody does a wrap, can they sell, sell that <laughs> note on your, on your platform? Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of wraps. A lot of guys out of Texas do, uh, they always do wraps, and they sell, like, Every single one they put on it, they sell. So we we handle up wraps. It came a couple of years ago, and <clears throat> we just know that you know, hey, this this goes here. There's an underlying lien that needs to be paid off. The escrow agent will know that. It will be in their timeline because they have their own separate little world. Uh, and then we'll get a satisfactory letter from the actual bank or whatever, whoever the uh, vendor vendor is. the vendor is. Yeah, and then after that, we provide that to the buyer, and then the deal keeps going through. So that happens at the end. We have a thing called disbursement agreement, which is basically – a document that buyers and the seller signs, buyers signs it to say, yes, I'm okay with sending my funds to this person. And the seller says, I'm okay with releasing collateral. And when they say, when they say I'm okay with releasing collateral, that's when it's paid off. It's paid off then. And then the deal keeps going. So, okay, so but, a whole bunch. I don't know if I've expressed myself right, but in a wrap, typically the first loan, the original loan does not get paid off. You, in, you, you wrap a second loan around the first loan. So the question is just, do you guys work with that or not? Like, for example, a few years ago, we had that back before COVID when the real estate market was not hot. Uh, we bought our dream home and we had our second dream home, like a very nice 5,000 square foot home uh, for sale. And it would just not sell. It just sit there and sit there and sit there. At some point of time, it's like, come on, guys, we do seller financing all day long. Why don't we offer seller financing in our own house? Now, our own mm -hmm. house still had about a $300,000 mortgage on it or about $400,000 mortgage on it. Uh, was basically, we had taken it out for some other investments. Prior to that, we had it free and clear. Just put, put, put a loan on it, used the money for something else and still had it sit there. So the house was worth, let's say, a million dollars and we, uh, and we, we had a $400,000 loan on it. So instead of selling it because nobody was wanting to buy it at that time, um, we did a, we, we finally added to on the MLS, we added seller finance and considered shortly, some, uh, shortly afterwards, somebody bought it and made us, I think, like a $950,000 offer with a something like $100,000 down and monthly payments of like, was ended up being like something like 5% interest or whatever it was, but basically paid like $6,000, five to 6,000, let's call it $6,000 a month to us. We're like, okay, great, but we didn't want to take four hundred thousand dollars our own pocket and pay off that loan at that time. We just simply mm. wrapped one around the other. 
So basically, right. our mortgage payment was everything included $2,000 a month. And this guy paid us, I think it was $5,500, if I can recall it. He paid us $5,500 a month. So we're right. like, great. So we continued making our payments and we received $5,500, which means we made a net profit of $3,500 for each month, each month that we did that. He did that for about a year, year and a half. Obviously, COVID hit, the market hit a start, steep incline, and then he decided to cash out and sold it for 1.1 or so, made himself a nice $150,000 profit on there, which is fine because we got rid of the house when we wanted to get rid of it because we had found our dream home. Right. But in this case, the second loan, which is a wraparound mortgage, basically for $850,000, which was wrapped around our $400,000 mortgage, would, would we have been able to sell something like that on your platform? And if not, that's totally fine. I just want to kind of find out what, what you guys allow and what you don't allow. Yes, you can sell on the platform, but typically what happens on the platform is when somebody sells the $850,000 loan, most of the buyers are going to require the $400,000 loan paid off out of those proceeds. Okay, so yeah, and that makes sense because they're coming up with 850 and then they want right. 400 to be paid off so that Correct. they don't have like a superseding lien on there. Yeah, that that totally makes sense. So so yeah, and so basically the note comes to us, comes to you, comes into the into the paper stack platform as a wrap, but mm -hmm. once the purchase has happened, the wrap gets unwound and the original mortgage gets paid off. Right. And you go from a junior position right. lien to you have a senior. To the senior position. Great. Yep. Makes total sense. Yeah. And that 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 that's cool. And so you you said now it fits exactly with what we talked about, Brett, that uh there is uh people do this all day long and then they yeah. just they just the original loan gets just gets gets paid off at that time. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's Very it. Nice. It's, yeah, it's... So what's yeah, coming right now? What are you guys excited about this in the next half a year, year in in your platform? You talked about the enterprise, but what what's the fun stuff that's coming right now? So we just, as of today, you know, we're launching our, our, our sister product called noclosings.com, which is basically, it's an agnostic paper stack. So if you have a deal outside the paper stack platform, you can just use all the technology of paper stack without the branding. So because we have a lot of buyers and sellers that they find their buyer or their seller and they're like, look, I love your system. I just don't want my buyer to know that there's such thing as a marketplace. I want to, I want to, I want to buy this note or I want to sell this note. How do I use your software? And we didn't have a solution. And so we've created one. It's called Note Closings. And it's basically you can order up closing and invite whoever you want, assign to dues. So that's a big thing we have rolling out. And then also it's paper stack without the marketplace. Yeah. Basically, it's a closing process. So you don't have to have the marketplace. And, and then the enterprise. Our enterprise version of the product, um, which is targeting institutions. You know, it's it's kind of crazy to think about, but they're still buying and selling 50, 100. $200 million portfolios using email and spreadsheets. Um, we've yeah. talked to many large broker dealers who are coming to us going, you guys have more technology available for the actual transaction process than we do. And we just operate inside of our email inbox with, with uh, spreadsheets. So yeah, it, we, we do a large multifamily deals and the amount of emails and spreadsheets that go around even on, on, $30 million, or I would assume the same as on $150 million, which that size we haven't done yet, uh, deals is, is, is ridiculous. So yeah. Um, there's, there's not a process for it, right? It's just, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing out there. So we're creating, yeah, we're creating that. Um, the nice thing about it is the way we've designed um, noteclosings.com, which is going to be the the backbone and the sort of the infrastructure of the enterprise version is it's built each, each part of the process is built like Legos. So you can put together a process for doing um, a $30 million multifamily based on, because it's all the same stuff, right? It's negotiations, communications, contracts, document execution. Somebody's got to hold the funds. Somebody's got to release the funds. Somebody's got to handle the closing. Um, so you can put together a different transaction for any kind of transaction you want, whether you're buying a car, you're leasing an apartment, selling 30, uh, you know, 300 doors through uh, an apartment complex transaction. So that's kind of, we're excited for that. That's a couple years down the road. Um, I think enterprise is going to be sort of that first real test run at building a new transaction with the Lego pieces. But yeah, we're, we're very excited. 
What technology do you guys use in the background? Do you build this all yourself or you use commercial uh, software for that? Uh, so it's built on React, which is um, JavaScript, so JavaScript and Firebase. And so it's, cu it's custom stuff. Our, uh, uh, one of our founders is yeah, a, uh, a full stack developer. He's, you know, anything you see on paper stack right now, he wrote every line of code. Um, so it's, he's, he's out there doing it right now. Yeah. He's a unicorn <laughs> at this stuff. So it's, it's good. And he's our CTO. And so he's starting to manage, um, our team of developers, but it's, uh, everything is sort of custom in house. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And you guys are going to be sponsors at our upcoming live event, uh, the land profits live, uh, event in, in Tampa at the end of September. So if anyone interested to, to learn about uh, trading now, it's to learn about real estate, learn about, we particularly focus on the land flipping side of things. Uh, make sure you guys uh, go to Land Profits Live, landprofitslive.com and, uh, and buy a ticket. So uh, with that said though, uh, let's talk about, uh, particularly, I'm particularly excited about land, land note selling and the land, the land space. Uh, what do you think is your per, your portion of of houses versus commercial versus land on your platform right now? It's changing rapidly. Yeah, we we actually had it where uh, for like a week we had more land notes we had single family. Which it's, it's over it's over 120 land notes and those. I'll tell you what, Jack. Like when I first saw the land notes come, you know, because we were dealing with real estate notes, it, it was just a different. You know, someone put it on there and someone said, "Do you think this is going to sell?" And I was like, "Go ahead, try. It's free to list." And so. They put it on there. It was just a bunch of this. Does it look good? I was like, it looks like a bunch of rocks to me, but it was out in the middle of Colorado. And, and, it's, and then uh, it looks like dirt. It looks like dirt. And he, he, uh, he called me back later that day and he's like, I'm already in a closing. I'm like, you sold one of those? He sold, I sold all of them. I was like, you did? Really? And so then I was like, what's up with this land yeah. thing? And so we well, have the beauty that, of uh, land. The beauty yeah. of land is that, that you can get these pieces of land for a steeper, way steeper discount. Then you have in the houses. Like sometimes you get you gotta get the house for like 70 cents on a dollar, and then you put some rehab in there, you sell it for self-financing. You don't you don't have a whole lot of discount space before you start losing money. Right. Right. Uh, in in the land space, as you guys mentioned, the uh, fifteen thousand dollar property that's worth 70 or eight thousand dollar property that's worth 70. Like we find that all day long. I, I was sitting with my daughter who is going through our land coaching program right now, and uh, some of the phone calls that gotten back from interested land sellers is amongst them is a lady that has, has, a, has had a property for 30 years. She's inherited it and it's worth $110,000. And we're going to make her a $45,000 offer on that thing. So, um, and I got a good, good feeling on that, that we actually might get it accepted. So then we'll turn around. We'll have two choices. We'll sell it for 65 cash. And my 15 year old daughter makes $20,000 uh, right. or, and she does all the work. Or we we'll might put it up for a hundred grand with seller financing, and ten grand down, and then perhaps either enjoy the cash flow or turn around and put it on you guys' platform, and might sell it for eighty thousand dollars, and so she gets cashed out at eighty, or actually, but that's an eighty thousand dollars note. Might sell it for seventy thousand dollars, but she already has ten in her pocket, and. Um, mm -hmm. And 70, so she gets 80 out of that deal and she has 40 on it. Now she makes $40,000 after she's cashed out or something along those lines. Or do it a partial. Take 10 or, or grand up partial, front. Exactly. And, and if you get and sell the $45,000. Exactly. But the missing part is that and then she gets the money later on. Uh, so, so bottom line is there's much more wiggle room in the land space. As a result, you can sell a land note that you sold with a fifteen with a twelve point nine percent interest rate. That's the normal interest rate we charge, and still sell it at seventy cents on the dollar. And now the note buyer makes twenty five thirty percent on their makes a twenty five thirty percent yield, and that is attractive. If 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 the down payment was high enough, the thing is like you don't have to. If it looks like a bunch of rock, the thing is the note buyer doesn't have to play with the rocks. The note buyer doesn't care. As long as the numbers make sense, they just get a check. And a check from that is just as good as a check from, from a house. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good. My, my son's, uh, he'll be 14 in July, and he's starting to kind of take note of what's going on and, and understanding yeah. this stuff. So it's good. Yeah, teach him young. Yeah, teach him young. We're building a group of entrepreneurs. And she literally, literally says, like, why in the world would I ever want to get a job? That's like... That's the ridiculous. So it's like, yes, uh, yeah. that's that's how I want to grow up with. That's what I. That's how I want to bring her up. 
Well, okay, guys, uh, obviously your website, I would assume, is paperstack.com, right? And yep. uh, how, how does anyone get a hold of you? Let's just give us a couple of ways that they can find you. Sure. Uh, on the website, there's a little icon that's in the bottom right-hand corner that you can click and just leave a message that way or hello at Paperstack. That's a, probably the best two ways to yeah. get in touch with us. Or if you want to follow us, we have a YouTube channel. You can check us out. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff on about notes there. We talk a lot about notes, and there's a lot of series on just actually using the platform, the process right. of going through there. Um, but then we touch, you know, we touch on land notes. We touch on this. Hey, how does this work? We touch on the land notes. Yes. We've got to get some more land note topics on there. But yeah, more, more mortgage debt. But yeah, so yeah, YouTube and then just hello at Paperstack. We, are, we have people watching that all the time. So that goes to a, a general inbox. And so... Usually get a response within, I don't know, a minute or two. Yeah. Unless it's 1 a.m. on a Sunday, like some guy. <laughs> Somebody was frustrated. It was Memorial Day at 1 a.m. and we weren't responding. <laughs> That's right. So, well, well, guys, um, then, uh, and, and, and the easiest way to get a hold of you guys is to just simply uh, come to our live event, landprofitslive.com. Right. Uh, buy yourself a ticket, uh, learn how to create these land deals for pennies on a dollar, and, and then turn around and sell them right there through you guys' platform and and make more money than the house flippers do. Uh, that's the easiest way. So uh, also, uh, just like we will do a separate interview with one of these, uh, it's fairly soon in the future, I think, uh, to our coaching group, because we have an advanced group, we have a normal coaching group and an advanced coaching group, and, and they're always looking for exactly resources like that. So I know you work with one of our coaches, Aaron. Uh, he mm -hmm. introduced you to us, and, uh, and I think Aaron is going to do the interview fairly soon too. So um so again i uh, love what you guys do love the fact uh, that quite a few of our students have sold notes through paper stack already so that's mm -hmm. why we said like we got to get them on a podcast because proof is in the pudding the notes are selling and yeah. uh, making great uh, great money on those notes and i'm um, super excited to have you guys be sponsors at our live event too so with that said thank you very much you guys have a great day thanks for being on the show thank thanks you Thanks. All right. And with that said, that is concludes another episode of the Jack Boss Show, where we talk about real estate, finance, and entrepreneurship. In this case, we covered all three. Like, look at these guys creating out of a need that they saw, a solution that now is 14,000 users that buy and sell notes that you can get deals done and sell your notes through there, and that they're providing a tremendous uh, service to the investor community and standardizing a process that truly is the wild west to this day. So with that said, make sure you, if you enjoyed this episode, give us a five stars, give us a thumbs up, uh, hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next show.